So I finally got the full system. This is the Spark. Uh, it's the Grid O Racing exhaust. It's uh, the titanium, the full titanium. They sell one that's uh, stainless steel up front, but if you can see, it's turning blue. Holy shit, it's turning baby blue near the headers. It's turning blue, and that's what I want. I mean, blue, blue, right? That's what I want. Um, so, you know, I had to pay extra, but it came in. David came through. V Cycle Nut, bro, talk to that guy. If you guys have this bike, my God, it is a beast, bro. Like I said, I liked it even with the stock exhaust with his tune. He really opened it up. But with the actual correct exhaust, with the actual correct intake that the tune is made for, I mean, it's honestly unreal. The power differences are there. It's doing things that I've never experienced it doing before and it's just it means more power uh, this one is eight and a half pounds lighter so it's just less mass uh, and with his tune you know having the AFR correct it's just more power every fucking wear uh, at high throttle your engines moving a lot of air that's what engines are the air pumps and so near high throttle it can only move the air as fast as the slowest component the least efficient part and for me that was the stock exhaust that i still had on uh, so that was really limiting me and now i mean low rpms mid rpms in the power bank everywhere man everywhere is insane first gear it's like fucking it's so powerful it's like unusable like wide open i mean even when i lean over it's still fucking power wheeling. What are you guys on MT-09s doing to keep that front wheel down? Because I can't do it on the longer swing arm. I can't even imagine. <laughs> it, that's insane. Listen to it. Those downshifts <laughs> are so fucking crispy. It feels, like, it feels like my fucking leader bike. I, I don't know. Of course it isn't, right? But, bro, it fucking feels like it. I mean, I wish I had one with me right now, like, so I could ride back to back and, like, see what I'm missing. But, bro, I mean, power everywhere, smooth as can be. The bike is just happy doing all this shit. And on top of that, of course, the bike is faster than ever now because I'm low on fuel. Six gears power band starts at about 90 miles an hour. So at 55, we shouldn't be very powerful, but it, but it is. This thing is moving, okay? And at 90, just now, like I, as soon as I felt it start pulling, I let go. But there's this, there's this thing you can do with these bikes. I'm sure you can do this with any bike. But like, if you are going and you lean into it, you know, it feels like normal. But if you like sit straight up, and I've never had a bike with this with this vertical of uh, seating position, but if you hit the, the bike's power and you're sitting up, dude, it feels like warp speed, dude. It feels like your head's going into a black hole and your body's becoming spaghetti. Fucking scary, bro. You wanna get scared? You guys wanna get scared? Do that shit. Listen to those shifts, man. So buttery smooth. ecstatic uh, I mean I didn't know I wanted more power probably honestly didn't want more power <laughs> definitely didn't need it but uh, with it here bro unbeatable man unbeatable so yeah if you guys have this platform or any platform the V cycle nut touches honestly bro let me just tell you now it's fucking worth it it's fucking worth it like did I need any of this well, now that I have it, yes, I wholeheartedly, <laughs> fully believe I needed it. But I didn't, you know, you don't know until you know. And uh, now having the bike work like this, this much power everywhere, man, it's it's so good. It's so good. And it was good before. 
how did you, the only thing you can do with a good thing is make it a better thing and that is what v siphon nut does man i'm not sponsored i don't make a dime but I get immense enjoyment from what he did to my bike, and I know that you guys will too. Yeah, I mean, if you guys wanted a more cost-conscious uh, exhaust, I mean, the Yoshimura, the two brothers, but he said Yoshimura requires you to have an in-person, like, counter, basically. You have to have an in-person store, and every, everything he does is pretty much over the internet, so you can't carry the Yoshimuras, but you can go on his site and see that he has the tunes and everything for them. And when it comes to an exhaust that is in stock, is good, makes good power, that he tunes, <clears throat> and cheap is the Yoshimura. But, um, you know, I was able to get my Spark exhaust, and it still doesn't say in stock. So, you know, I waited, what, two weeks? Bought my exhaust, waited two weeks, three weeks. So, not terrible. It shipped in, like, two days. It, uh... It was like a two-day FedEx delivery. It said signature required. So I took off work yesterday. And uh, when the FedEx man shows up, I'm like, do you have to sign? He's like, nah, you're good. Like, well, first of all, I fucking respect that. Second of all, why did I take off work to do this? <laughs> but it's all right. Yesterday I took off. I got paid eight hours to watch John Wick and install my exhaust. I mean which was a frustrating process by the way. David has on his website showing you all the tune data for the Spark exhaust. He shows you like pick a couple of step-by-step -step photos um, installing it, what he went through because he did install it on his own bike. He owns the bikes after all. He has a MT-09. Same process. Um, and there's some nuts you gotta you gotta loosen that you wouldn't think you have to loosen but you do have to loosen and you'll only realize it after minutes of turmoil and then this exhaust in particular has a db killer but um you have to put it from the inside you have to take the exhaust tip off and then shove it through the back end and then it comes to the front that you look at as you look at the exhaust so the DBD killer is right there, but then you got to go through the mesh with an Allen key and this fucking bolt in there. And I did all that, but that was the most excruciating part of the entire install. My God. I mean, it's right there. I can see it. And then I put it in there and I start turning and nothing happens. God damn it. I hate that. And it's just, the angle is just different enough. And oh my God. Anyway, got it done. Sounds great. Really happy with it. His tune that he did for me is for the DB Killer on. And uh, I think, me, I could deal with it with uh, without the DB Killer. I think, I mean, my R1 was straight piped. I don't think I would have any issues with the straight pipe. But it's loud enough for me to enjoy. It's loud enough to where you're not dictating miles around you, like what you're doing. Because there's one thing, like, if you were a police officer, you'd do the same thing, and this is how they think, okay? You see a guy with a nice car, fast car, fast bike, and he's doing the speed limit, no problem. He's doing eight over, maybe. Not a real big problem. But if you hear somebody acting a fucking fool, and then you see the car, see the bike, they're doing the speed limit now, but you know they were just acting a complete fucking jackass. If they're doing eight over, hmm. That's a motherfucker about to get a ticket, right? So that's... To have it moderately loud, I think, is the ticket. So you're not necessarily telling the whole town. Someone with a triple is a jackass. When you see somebody like that, pull them over. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the best of both worlds. Uh, it's loud enough. I think the stock exhaust for, like, the vast majority of people, the people who are watching my videos, or uh, the age bracket that is the largest is like 35 to 40. Now, for those guys, you know, they've probably been riding for a while. They want to have some fun. They want the comfort. They love the looks. At that age, you don't necessarily have to have that boy racer loudest exhaust possible, right? You've kind of grown out of that. Um, but at the same time, we have fucking hearing loss. <laughs> so it's like... You know, you tread that fucking line of where it's loud enough for you to enjoy, 
but not crazy. Yeah, with, with this exhaust, very happy. Uh, it sticks out a little. You see here? I don't know if you guys can see. It sticks out, okay? Uh, but it's not a big deal. If I had a least favorite part about this, it's the fact that it sticks out. But it's not ugly. Uh, it's just it's just different. It's a little, you know, cocked out. Um, it's not a problem for me. That might be a dissuasion event for someone. Um, and that's okay. Like I said, the, the SC project is flushing at the bottom. Yoshimura flushing at the bottom. And there's a lot of ones that, you know, come up on the side and mount up here. And uh, Akropovich does that, and there's, there's a bunch of other ones. So there's a different exhaust is going to speak to everybody. For me, it was the titanium headers here. I need titanium headers. My favorite thing uh, on, on any bike is the H2, how the headers are titanium and all blue. And that's what's happening here, and I fucking love that shit. And then there's like the loop-de-loop -loop in the back. For me, it's, it's close you know, between the SC project and this, but looks wise, this is unmatched, unbeatable in my opinion, so I just got this one. Um, and it sounds good, I'm very happy. It's crazy that it's as loud as it is and can go louder. Like I could take the DB Killer out, but I'm not going to. Uh, David recommends if you run the DB Killer, get, get the tune for the DB Killer. If you don't, get the tune for it not to have the DB Killer. Uh, I think I lose like, maybe two pound feet of torque and one horsepower by having this in there, but it's fine, man. It's, it's fine. This bike is a fucking beast. It's a rocket ship to me. Way more than enough. Too much, honestly. I mean, one horsepower, bro. Tell me, where that, where's that one horsepower at? When y'all see it, call it out. You guys seen it? I need, I need, I have that more, right? Clearly, this is not enough. Come on, man. This bike is, a, is nuts, so one fucking horsepower. I'm not missing it at all. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's a blast, man. And one thing I like to do, I, I try not to give bad reviews unless you fuck up. But one thing I try to do is, is give good reviews for people who do a good fucking job. If they go above and beyond, you got to. And, David for me has. He answered so many of my questions, emailed me back and forth where the emails are not making him any money, but he, that, he just knows so much shit, you know, he's forthcoming with his knowledge. And uh, so I bought the, just to reiterate, I have the Sprint air filter. I've done the air box modifications he outlines on his website. I have the Spark uh, full titanium exhaust and I have his flash for all of that. That's all my performance mods. Um, and that's where we're at. And it's killer. Talk to David. Talk to David. Go on his website. Either get some more mods or get some flashes for the mods you have. Or you can even get a flash for the mods you're going to get. And that's the case I was for the first three weeks in this bike. And had no issues. Was really enjoying it. But bro, when you have the parts that your flash is made for with the flash, it's sick. It's insane, man. Insane. <laughs> the downshift sounds so good. The fucking upshifts sound good. It's beautiful, man. Good God. I love this bike. I also installed the Road 6s. That right there. Uh, so my top speed at Redline in second gear was like 80 miles an hour. Changing the tires, you know, there was like a thousand miles on those tires. Changing them over to the brand new Road 6, it's now 86 miles an hour at the top of uh, second gear. Uh, 85, 86, okay? And that's just, just, just from the diameter of the wheel being bigger, you know? Bigger diameter wheel means the same number of rotations goes further and goes faster. So you get more power with a newer, bigger wheel uh, and more top speed. And more, more power everywhere, more speed everywhere. Um, and the, the life of these tires is so much longer than you know Q3, the uh, Dunlops, and all these racing compound tires. 
Like I don't feel like I need any more grip. Grip is never an issue. These perform so much better in the rain, which dude, you're gonna ride in the rain, believe it or not. Like I am not a, I'm not a fair weather rider, but I don't like if I can help it riding in rain. But dude, it's gonna happen. And when it happens, you know, fucking with your power modes and hoping, like fuck all that. I'd rather have a tire that's ready, can do that if I ever need to. And I think after, as these wear in, they become better in the rain. That doesn't make any sense, right? But it, that's how they fucking make them. That's insane. So, yeah, big ups to Michelin. Beautiful tire. And uh, it's gonna, if this tire doesn't last me 15,000 miles, I would be incredibly surprised. And on bikes, normally 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 maybe. So this is at least double of what the best you could have expected. Um, on a normal like street racing compound type tire beatable unbeatable a little bit more up front But the value you're gonna save by keeping it on there longer by it working longer by being it safer and just more confident overall and the sides when you're leaning when you want that softer tire it's fucking there it's on this already what else could you want the center wears more slowly and in rain it performs I mean best of all worlds very happy I don't have the front tire on yet but I mean my front one looks brand new um, which you would expect <laughs> I'm only at 1300 miles you would expect the tire to look brand new but that back tire was fucked so I don't know how anybody's still driving theirs with more than a thousand miles but steel flex is out here in these streets probably at 4,000 miles on the clock fucking making it work I mean do you man do you. you you paid for the tire fucking use the tire I understand but now I just have it all done I got extra performance out of it and now I don't have to think about all any of that shit so I'm really happy bike is effectively done man effectively done uh, feels great I have no complaints uh, other than that little thing the transmission does but other than that I mean last time I was here I was you know going wide open in sixth gear and uh, it was so much slower. I mean, <laughs> it's just even out of power band, even when you're not chasing the revs to be in the, you know, like I said, fourth is the gear. But even out of fourth, it, it feels good. In fourth, monster. Monster. But yeah, I just wanted to show the bike off a little bit, like it's, it's in its finished state. And uh, I'm going to keep enjoying it. Uh, keep updating you guys if anything changes but I don't expect any issues I expect to just continue to have a good time and that's why I bought this thing but I feel like the ride should be about what, what everyone should be doing is just enjoying yourselves we have a lot of beautiful summer coming up you know wear your gear but get out there guys I want to see you out here and I hope I do enjoy yourselves guys I sure as hell am